Hi and welcome to Cuaderno Reciclado. My name is Marifer. As you may notice, this channel is mainly in Spanish, but I also want to start uh, filming book reviews in English, specifically about books that were originally published in Spanish, as a way of hopefully sharing Hispanic literature with more people. I will leave a link in the description below of the last review I filmed in English, which was about 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And today I will talk to you about Pedro Paramo by Mexican author Juan Rulfo. Uh, first, I'll talk a little about uh, the author and the book in general. And then I will get to specific points that could be considered spoilers. I will let you know in case you don't want to know that uh, and you want to leave the video. Uh, but I will also leave uh, the link to the review I posted on Medium that is entirely without spoilers. Sorry about the noise. I know it's very annoying. Uh, it's the air conditioning, but I really cannot turn it off because it's super hot today. Pedro Paramo was published in 1955 and it is now considered to be a classic of Mexican literature, although its influence has reached many other parts of the world. It has captivated bo both uh, readers and well-known authors such as Garcia Marquez and Borges, uh, but also the Japanese author Kensaburo Oe who actually lived in Mexico for a while and when people asked him why he had decided to go to Mexico he said that it was because he wanted to know the, the country that the best uh, storyteller he had ever read was born. And also American author Susan Sontag uh, who said of this novel that it was not only one of the masterpieces of universal literature, but also one of the most influential works of the 20th century. The author Juan Rulfo was born in the state of Jalisco, although he lived in Mexico City for a long time. Uh, he was apparently very shy and reserved. He didn't really give out a lot of interviews and he published only two books while he was alive this novel pedro paramo and the collection of short stories uh the plane in flames i think that's the name in, in english and it may be a little strange that such a celebrated and important author uh, at least for mexican literature only published two books but while I was researching the history around this book, I found a commentary. I think it was made by Susan Sontag, although I'm not completely sure. But uh, the comment said, like, uh, there are authors that have uh, a long list of works, but it is difficult for them for all of them to be masterpieces. They're lucky if they get one to be uh, something that tr transcends. Uh, and in this case, uh, Juan Rulfo wrote two books and both of them are thought of as masterpieces. So that's no small feat. I think even Rulfo himself said once that he, he constantly wrote but he also uh, constantly threw away what he wrote because he thought it wasn't good enough. So here we have an author that wrote a lot, but published very little. So what that means is that uh, this was a very demanding author. He was very demanding of himself, but also very demanding of his readers, uh, as we can tell when we read his books. Um, in my case, I, I can agree with that, that at least I've only read uh, Pedro Paramo, but this is a very... I, I was aware that it was a hard book to read, and indeed it was hard for me. I read it first when I was very young, like 15, and I think at that time I wasn't really very patient with 
with books that required more of my attention so I didn't get anything at all and and now that I reread it I actually like I read it once and then I started again and that's how I was able to kind of start uh, like placing which character was was speaking when and also what what time were we in, in the present or in the past because throughout this novel that is not very long it's about 130 pages at least in my edition um, the, the, the author keeps changing uh, the time and the character that is speaking even within the same paragraph so that's why you have to pay really close attention otherwise you will get lost the writing is deceptively simple it's very clear and straightforward but also very poetic at times um, another mexican writer fernando el paso described his style as so careful it seemed careless and he wrote this actually in a letter he wrote to juan rulfo after his death which is very moving. I will leave the, the link to that text uh, in the description in case you, you can read in Spanish because I, I thought it was very, uh, yeah, very touching. And, but I also think that that description is very spot on about the style of this author. The story of this book starts with Juan Preciado who promises his mother on her deathbed that he will travel to her hometown of Comala to meet his father, who is Pedro Paramo, the title of this novel. Um, when he gets there, he will realize that there's, um, there's something a little off about this town. And throughout the novel, we will learn more about Pedro Paramo, but also about the other people that live in that town. Now I will mention a few things that could be considered spoilers, although I think at least here in Mexico I feel like we are all aware of, of those spoilers before we read the book. At least I think I, I did know them before re reading this book, uh, but in case you don't want to know more you can leave the video here. Um, just know that I, I recommend this book a lot and I really urge you to read it. So as I mentioned before, uh, the first thing we notice uh, when Juan Preciado arrives to, to Comala is that people behave in an odd manner. Um, when he arrives to the house of El Viges Diada, she tells him that her mom ha had already told her that he was coming, although his mom is dead. And when he tells her that he arrived in town with another, another guy that lived there uh, who was called Abundio, she tells him that that guy died a long time ago. So we then find out that this town that seems and looks like a ghost town is actually a ghost town everyone in this town is dead and so this is the first like twist of the novel which i think that for its time was very innovative um and then uh the second twist is that this guy juan preciado who is like the main character for the first part of the novel uh, dies in the middle of the novel so from there uh, the focus shifts uh, more uh, to Pedro Paramo to who he was and also the other people in town uh, but yeah Juan Preciado dies it, it's not really it can go unnoticed if you don't <laughs> like if you don't pay attention but then also it, it's never really explained uh, like fully how he dies. One possibility is that he died from fever because you do read that he starts feeling very ill. So that could be a possibility. But then uh, when they ask him like, 
what happened to you he answers that the whispers uh, he says something like the whispers killed me or something so like maybe another possibility is that he died from fear from finding out that everyone in this town that looks like they were alive are actually dead but of course the actual main character in this novel is Pedro Paramo uh, in this novel we we witness his life from birth to death we find out for example about his relationship with his father which was very complicated because when he was younger uh, his father Lucas Paramo uh, would talk to him and thought of him as a, as a nobody, as a good for nothing. He was even kind of ashamed of him. Um, but then when, when Pedro Paramo was older, and his father uh, gets uh, murdered in a, in a wedding, he starts practically killing every wedding guest to find out what happened to him. So, um, we see that Pedro Paramo is a, is a very powerful and violent man. He is practically in charge of, of the town, but he, he is so powerful because he takes advantage of everyone else. Uh, he leaves every girl in town pregnant, so he's a pretty despicable person all around. The only time we see him express a little emotion is with regards to the death of Susana San Juan, who was his like childhood crush and who he brings to Comala, practically uh, kidnapping her uh, after he finds out that her husband died. A couple of historical events are mentioned in this novel, such as the Cristero War and also the Mexican Revolution. Uh, there's this part when this group of revolutionaries arrive to the town of Comala and go to Pedro Paramo to ask him for money. And when he asks them, like, why are you fighting about? Uh, they answer that, uh, they, they tell him, like just hold on uh, for a, for a while and when we get instructions we'll let you know what we're fighting about so like they had no idea um, and uh, we have to remember that this um, this book was written and published in the post-revolutionary period uh, in which like I imagine most revolutions, uh, there was some progress, but there was also a lot of disillusionment. I think that Rulfo shows in this novel a side of Mexico, and I would argue also that a side of the world that we sometimes like to pretend doesn't exist. Specifically talking about Mexico, uh, this side that he shows here is not the one with the culture and the food and the music, but uh, the, the ugly and bleak and sordid side that this country also has. This side is that of people like Pedro Paramo that use uh, their power to take advantage of other people. This is a violent, sexist, racist, homophobic, poverty-filled side of the reality we live in. As Rufo writes in this novel, there are towns that taste like despair, and the sad thing is to realize you may be living in one of those towns. I know this review ended on a sad and pessimistic tone, but I think maybe the point of this book is to show this side to remind us that it, it is still there and that the least that we can do is acknowledge it. Uh, but in the end, uh, we all share responsibility in trying to change it. As you can probably tell, I highly recommend this book. I also recommend, like I mentioned before, to read it, uh, to pay very close attention when you read it, but also ideally to read it more than once.
Also, in case you understand Spanish, I will leave a link in the description of a conference by Mexican author Juan Villoro that explains this book in detail, like every aspect of it, which I found very interesting. Leave a comment telling me if you read Pedro Paramo and if you liked it or if you're planning to read it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.